Hello and welcome back to Country Names and Their Etymologies. If you missed the previous episodes, you can check out this playlist. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Who doesn't like a tropical paradise? Okay, then how about 607 of them? Yep, the Federated States of Micronesia is a collection of over 600 blissful Pacific islands. Spread across them live just a little over 110,000 people. So it's beautiful, warm, isolated and not too crowded. But what does Micronesia stand for? No, literally. Well, the explanation is quite simple. It's an amalgam of two Greek words, Mikros meaning small and Nesos meaning island. Thus Micronesia means small island. As to how a bunch of Pacific islands got a Greek name, this word was proposed in 1831 by a French explorer to distinguish this region from the neighboring Polynesia and Melanesia. And in case you were wondering, Mikros comes from Proto-Indo-European smeg, meaning small, and Nesos, well, we're not sure, but believe it could come from Proto-Indo-European snech, meaning to flow or to swim. The next country on our list is a place near and dear to my heart, cause I'm also Romanian. We're talking about the Eastern European country of Moldova. The legend says that Moldova got its name after a dog. The story goes that Dragos, the first king of Moldova, went hunting for aurochs, a now extinct species of wild cattle, and bisons. Of course, he was followed by a bunch of hunting dogs. During the hunt, all of his dogs got tired, except a female named Molda, who continued to run after its prey and eventually drowned in a river. To honor her, Dragos named that river Moldova, as well as the entire land. That, of course, is only a legend. This country and the wider historical region of Moldova did indeed get its name from the river bearing the same name, but only because the valley of this river hosted the first capital, Moldova, or Turgul Moldovei. The origin of the name is a bit unclear, but it's theorized that it comes from the Gothic German Mulda, meaning mud or dust, or Molde, meaning mine. Next, we visit a place so tiny, you'll have a hard time finding it on maps, Monaco. Monaco is a microstate of less than 40,000 people, living in an area of only 2 square kilometers. It's actually the second smallest state in the world after the Vatican City, while at the same time the most densely populated sovereign state in the world. Roughly 19,000 people live here per square kilometer, so yeah, it's a bit too crowded. Their name is an ancient one. In the 6th century BC, this place was the site of a Greek colony, referred to as Monoikos, which means single house, from monos meaning small and oikos or house. The legend goes that Hercules himself visited this place, ousted the old gods, and so a temple was built here, the Hercules Monoikos. Because it was the only temple in this area, the settlement became known as Monoikos. Monoikos ultimately derives from Proto-Indo-European. Monos comes from May or small, and Oikos from wake or to settle. Now let's hop over to the other side of Eurasia, where we find the nation whose name struck fear into the hearts and minds of our ancestors, Mongolia. This is obviously a Latin term meaning land of the Mongols. Mongol has an uncertain etymology, possibly bearing the name of a mountain or a river. At its origins, it might stem from the word Mong, meaning brave. First attested as Mungu and previously as Mungku, the name belonged to a certain northern tribe of the Shiwe people, known today as Kamak Mongol. They were a leading tribe but eventually weakened to a breaking point. The last head of this tribe was Yesuge, whose son, Temujin, eventually united all the Shiwe tribes and founded an empire. That man adopted a new name, Chinggis Khan, and his empire was the Mongol Empire. This is roughly how the Mongolic people of this region all got to be called as Mongols. Let's again jump back to Europe, where we find a small, rarely talked about volcanic country, Montenegro. First off, this place is of an exquisite beauty well worth visiting. 
The English name of the country is actually the Venetian name, meaning Black Mountain. The Black Mountain is Mount Lofchen, covered by dense evergreen forests which give it a dark appearance. The endonym of the country, or how the natives call their home, is Tsurnagora, which literally means the same thing. While the Venetian comes from Latin, of course, at its roots it's also a Proto-Indo-European term. Monte comes from men, meaning mountain, and negro stems from noct, meaning night. Right at the edge of North Africa lies the country of Morocco. Their name is the name of their former capital, the famous city of Marrakesh. Well, sort of. It's the Portuguese rendition of that name, who called the city Marocos. Marrakesh is actually a Berber name that was formed out of an expression, Murnakush, or the land of God. Moroccans, however, call their country by a different Arabic name, Al-Maghrib, which literally means the place where the sun sets, or simply the West. Please note that in English and most European languages, Maghrib or Maghreb typically refers to all of Northwest Africa, not just Morocco. Lastly, we take a look at another African nation, Mozambique. This country was also named by the Portuguese as Mozambique, after an island bearing the same name which used to be the capital of the Portuguese colony. The island itself was named after Musa bin Bik, an Arab trader and sheikh or ruler of the island before the Portuguese came and overtook everything. It's also proposed that he was the first man to settle here and founded the settlement. He was also among the first to teach and spread Islam into this region. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Tell me what you think about it downstairs and do hit that subscribe button if you want to see more episodes. If you really enjoyed this, there's a Patreon page where you can support my work. I hope to see you next time, bye.